when I was in high school, I dated a guy who was a year behind me. It was pure puppy love. We did almost everything together. Football games, basketball games, and school trips. We even rode the same bus and shared some of the same classes. We got pretty serious for almost two years, but he was very possessive. After a while, it got overbearing, and I broke up with him. But it wasn't that easy. He called and texted me incessantly for days, sometimes sending me up to 200 texts a day. I ended up blocking him, but he wouldn't let it go. My family members reported seeing someone outside our house at night, trying to look in the windows. My father got fed up and ended this by running him off. Still at night, I would take our family dog for a walk, and more than once, I swore I saw him on the street. At first, he stayed a safe distance away, but I felt this sense of anger seething from him. It really creeped me out. After two or three times like this, he must have decided to take it up a notch and followed me along the street, forcing me to cut my dog walking short. I guess the only reason he didn't approach me was that our dog was a pit bull and he was afraid of her. I graduated and started attending a local university. Everything was going well and I even started dating a new guy. I worked in a downtown restaurant to make my way through college. And one night, I saw a figure outside looking in at me. There was something very familiar about this figure. Then, I figured it out. It was my old boyfriend. I went to get my manager, and by the time I got back to the front of the restaurant, he was gone. I did see someone walking away down the street, and I was sure that it was him. He slowly seeped back into my daily life. During the day, I started to look for him on campus. At night, I camped out of my dorm room because I felt safest inside, around people. It was sort of like being a prisoner in my own life. One night, I let my guard down. I thought it was safe and decided to walk to a friend's apartment. While I was on my way, I heard footsteps behind me, and when I looked back, I saw him. He was following me. I decided not to run, but he just kept following me, and after a block or two, I did break into a run. I felt my heart beating inside my chest, and I barely made it to my friend's house. This went on for a couple weeks until I finally notified campus security. They set up a mini sting operation and caught my old boyfriend stalking around outside my dorm. I had to go to court, but it was worth it. He never came around me again. First off, this happened in the 1990s, when malls were still a thing. I worked in a lower-rent department store in the women's apparel area. My job was to stock clothing, move merchandise around, and interface with customers. My favorite job was doing the displays. It was a decent job for a long time, until it wasn't. The men's section was right next to my area. So, as was expected, men shopped over there. Men would come and go, shopping away, but one day I noticed a particular man just standing in the back row near the pants, just staring across the store at me. I'm not a bad-looking specimen, and I've had a fair share of men ogle me, but there was something about the intensity of this man's attention. It raised the hairs on the back of my neck. I did my best to ignore it, but it was like he never took his eyes off me. I made an excuse to get my boss to let me go to the break room for a while. When I came back, the man was gone, and I breathed a huge sigh of relief. That didn't last long, though. The very next day, he came back, and he was no longer buried in the back of the men's section out of view. He stood at the very edge of the two areas, and he didn't seem to care if I knew he was staring at me. Every time he looked his way, he wore a silly, tight smile on his face, but there was nothing pleasant about it. After a while, I went to my boss, and she called mall security. He must have had some sort of sixth sense, because he left the store before they arrived. I thought the whole situation was sad, 
but it was over. I couldn't have been more wrong, though. Later that week, when I was feeling a little more relaxed at work, I was tasked with retrieving clothes from the fitting rooms. It was an easy job, just move from room to room collecting clothing. When I was in one of the rooms collecting a pile of tried-on clothes, I heard footsteps outside the room. First, I thought it was just another woman coming to try on clothes, but when I looked through the louvers in the door, I saw a man's boots, and they were facing inward toward the door of the room I was in. My inner alarms went off. It had to be him, but I was trapped in this room. The door between me and him was made of flimsy wood, and it would take nothing for him to break through it. I didn't know what to do, so I just decided to play it cool and be quiet. After 30 seconds of this, he asked me why I called security on him the day before. Again, I didn't say anything. He said it made him very angry. He thought we could be friends, special friends, but he didn't like it when his friends called security on him. Playing the silent game wasn't working, so I asked him to just go away, but he said he couldn't. There was a connection between the two of us, one he had to know more about. He said I might not even know it's there, but it was real. It was real for him, though. My heart was pounding in my chest. I didn't know what to do, and I felt like I was going to pass out. That's when I heard his hands grab the doorknob, and he tried to open it. Again, I know the door and the lock wouldn't protect me, so I grabbed the door handle to try to keep him from turning the doorknob and opening the door. I quickly learned that it was a battle I was going to lose as he started to pull on the door, and I heard the wood start to crack. I gave up on trying to stop him from entering, dropped the clothes on the floor, and broke one of the hangers to make some sort of weapon, just anything. The wood between the door was reaching the breaking point. I heard a loud male voice yell, Hold it right there! A moment later, I heard scuffling sound outside the door, followed by grunting and some swearing. After it calmed down, I opened the door and found two security guards sitting on top of the man, holding him down. My boss had seen the whole thing and called security right away. It just took them a few minutes to get there. I thanked her profusely, and she gave me the rest of the day off. But I quit the next day and found an office job that was far away from any sort of public exposure. I read in the local paper that the man had attacked several women before, and he was sent off to prison for a long, long time. Over 20 years ago, we made a big move across the country to a whole new city. These types of moves are always stressful, but what lessened the stress for us was the fact that we were moving to our very own home. Up until then, we'd lived in apartments. So really, this was our first house, and we were really excited about it. Not too soon after we moved in, we received a letter in our mailbox. The letter said, I'm watching you. And it was signed by the real owner. The most curious thing about the letter was there was no postage on it and no return address. It was a little bit creepy, but we decided it was just someone playing a joke on us. So we tossed it. Life went on, but less than a week later, we got another letter. This one was even creepier. It asked us what we were doing in my house, so the writer claimed. It also said we'd better consider moving out and do it soon. Even though we saw menace behind those words, there wasn't anything we could do about it. It was just a letter. Then the third letter showed up. It asked us if we had found the secret of the house. Of course, we racked our brains about what the secret could be. It was all we could think of for a couple days until we figured out that whoever this was was just trying to psych us out. We tossed this letter out, and we went on with our lives. Everything went back to normal. That was until things got to be even more real. One night, 
just as we were getting ready for bed, my wife saw a figure outside the house looking in the window at her. She screamed and I came running, but by the time I got to her, whoever was looking in the window was long gone. I don't know what we could do. Do you call the police about a set of cryptic letters being sent to your house? And it was just a figure that only my wife saw. We decided to let it slide and it turned out to be a decision that we regretted. Late on a Friday night, we came home from a night on the town to discover our door standing ajar. I sent my wife back out to the car and I worked my way carefully through the house, moving from room to room, one at a time, with my heart beating like a trip hammer. I heard a strange moaning sound coming from our bedroom. Everything inside me told me to turn around and get out of the house and call the police. But I pushed to keep going. Once I got outside a room, I shoved the door open to discover a man sitting on the floor, rocking back and forth, clutching his arms around his body. It was totally creepy, and I slowly backed down the hallway. When I got outside, I called the police. They sent two cars and took the man out of the house. As it turned out, his family had lived in our house almost 20 years before we had moved in. He'd grown up in the house, but after leaving the house, he went through a complete mental breakdown. He'd been institutionalized for years, but his insurance had run out and he had been released. Apparently, he had been hanging out in our neighborhood, watching our every move since we'd moved in, and finally decided to break into the house. I don't know if he was truly dangerous, but the police removed him from the house and he was returned to an institution. We got a whole house security system after that, but it took us almost a year to truly relax and feel safe in our house again.